Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Daniel Knowles. Thank you for joining us. And remember, if you're joining us, you probably want to get more Mile High Ticks. So hit subscribe, whether it be on iTunes or Stitcher um, or any of the channels that we are on, Google, YouTube, etc. And make sure that you also are already for being at higher ground in September at Mile High. We look forward to seeing you there. And that is the place for people that want to change lives, spines, and minds with chiropractic. Today uh, is really a special podcast. Uh, I'm super thrilled about the um, guests we're having on today. Um, His energy, his enthusiasm, and his journey and story. And you're going to get to know him today on the podcast. You're also going to get to know him at Mile High because um, Jason Dulberg, DC2B, is one of the contest winners for the Mile High Speaker Contest. We decided to have a speaker contest many years ago because people were so enthusiastic about speaking. We thought it was a fun thing to do. Um, and this year, the speaker entries were so phenomenal that we actually decided to uh, pick multiple winners because I was our team was just so blown away. So first of all, uh, Jason Dulberg, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'm just super excited to be here and just talk to you about anything that can help anyone. So let's have people get to know you just a little bit better first, which um, how did you you're, tell them right now you're a student at Life University fourth quarter. Is that correct? Yep, that is correct. And tell us a little bit about your journey to chiropractic. How'd you find your way into chiropractic? So I was blessed with being in a family that my dad is actually a chiropractor and I grew up in a chiropractic household. And throughout my life, I always felt a calling towards the profession, but I always kind of steered away from it and didn't really want to copy my dad. I went to, I went to college to, for political science. I graduated from the University of Florida and then I sold real estate in college. And then I also tried to do a startup company, but every direction I went, I just always got called back to my roots And just, I finally decided, you know what, this is for me. This is what I'm here to do. And now I'm just very excited to be pursuing my passion. Well, we're excited to have you here and excited to, uh, that you found your way and most often found your way to chiropractic. Most often people, um, you know, so often here when I do podcasts, see it as a calling. And, you know, honestly, regardless of what you do in life, when you're filled with purpose, it makes all the difference in the world, much more than being filled with money. It's good when there's money and purpose. Um, that's even better. Okay. So, um, tell us about what inspired you, um, to, to find your way to chiropractic. What was your inspiration or why did you feel drawn to it? So I grew up being in my parents' clinic. I would help them all the time. You know, I'm sure your children were very similar. They would be behind the desk. They would meet and greet patients and get to know the people coming into the practice. And there were just a couple of people. Like, I remember one story that really stuck with me. There was this one man who had I'm not going to say any names or anything, obviously, but I'm pretty sure he had stage four cancer. He was terminally ill, something like that. And he wasn't supposed to live very long, I remember. He had under a few months. And I knew this man for years. And he always kept coming back and kept getting care. He was in the office three times a week. And he was just so full of life and so vibrant. And it didn't make sense to me how he could have that diagnosis, but be the way that I, you know, that I saw him to be. And it really just inspired me and made me feel that the chiropractic care worked so well for him. And I, just all the other people, there's probably thousands of patients in my life that I've met through my parents' practice. And I just see such amazing results for all of them. And I just see the way it changed their lives. And to know that I can have that same sort of effect on others, hopefully one day, it just felt like too much of an amazing opportunity to pass up. So then here I am. There you go. So now um, you've been to Mile High before as an attendee once, twice. I don't remember. When a couple of times. Um, okay. I don't remember the exact, probably two or three times. But um, I remember, I specifically remember the first one, Danny, after um, you had your heart surgery. And I remember you being there. And I remember how passionate you were and how the show kept running and how important it was to everyone. Just all the great knowledge and everything that went down. And I just felt so inspired. I remember that specifically. And then I went to one or two after that. And I just remember seeing the speakers and just thinking, man, I would, I'd love to be up there one day. Well, there you go. And look at that. So then yeah. um, what was, what inspired you to decide to enter the speaker contest? 
to be honest, I didn't know if I was going to win or anything like that. I just, I just remembered being there sitting in the crowd. And I, I remembered feeling that I would like to be up there. I would like to share my own views and whatever research I can come up with. And so I got really inspired by a couple books I read and how they connected the world to chiropractic, to the universe around us and everything in between. And I just gave my all and tried to do a really good presentation. And I'm really glad that you gave me the opportunity. Well, you know, honestly, the team did. The team uh, scored your scored your findings really high. Um, I, I, and let me let me ask you this next question, which is, um, with you growing growing up in a chiropractic household, um, how did it how how did it um, impact you personally? Um, well, so growing up, I was actually very obese as a child. I was over 200 pounds, I remember, but I was very active. I was very flexible. I was very healthy. I felt no limitations. And I remembered comparing almost my own health to those of my friends and feeling that despite my weight and despite what I was carrying around, that I was just as capable, just as energetic, just as athletic and healthy. And I felt that I attributed a lot of that to the constant chiropractic care I've been getting since I was a little kid. And just things of that nature really inspired me in that direction too. Cool. Very cool. And then, so um, how has, you probably had some vision of what it would be like to be in chiropractic school from either your childhood or seeing your family. What is, what has chiropractic school been compared to what you imagined it would be like? So Going in, for whatever reason, I really thought it was going to be different than how it actually turned out to be. I didn't know what, what per se that I was going to be learning, because I knew obviously I'd be learning about, you know, the spine, chiropractic techniques, nervous system, all that. But going in, I just met so many like-minded people, and I just love all my professors, and I feel they're so intelligent, so dedicated to their craft. And it's just been such a great experience and just an excellent place to just learn and, you know, grow and explore my passion with other people, passionate about the same things. And so I really love it. That's really cool. Very cool. And did it somehow like reaffirm some of what you um, learned as a child growing up, like in terms of your values? Uh Uh-huh. I was, one of the things that kind of shocked me the most is I've been comparing almost the people who I knew at, during my bachelor's degree at the University of Florida versus the people who I've met in my chiropractic school and just their views and their opinions. And I love how this whole vitalistic philosophy that is chiropractic isn't just ingrained in the school itself, but it's in the people who go there and the way they do things and you know the way they live their lives and just healthy, amazing, great people. And I really, really appreciated every moment of it. That's very cool. That's very cool to hear. What's, what's one of the, what, share with people how you see like not quoting any kind of book that you read that like I read this so I'm going to quote it and say it the same way so I so I, I must be right but like what does chiropractic mean to you what what does what does what what is chiropractic to you to me chiropractic and I, I've told all of my friends and family and everyone who's known me growing up I think chiropractic is the profession of just the most untapped potential of any other profession that I've ever seen being that there's so few people who go and see chiropractors regularly. There's so few people who understand its effects and how a full expression of the nervous system goes ahead and works so well within your body and helps you grow and develop and be the best version of yourself. And seeing, you know, me, my family, my friends, other people who've gone through chiropractic care and the difference it made through their life, it just shows me this connection to everything and everyone else and being the full expression of who you are. Yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty right on. You know, I watched your um, entrant entry. Um, I didn't watch all, I didn't watch all of it because we had so many entries, but I watched portions of everybody's um, and the team was watching everybody's Um, and people are going to be very excited to see you on stage. Uh, And I think you're going to be very excited too. Um, as will everybody, the contest winners, um, all the speakers. I, I personally really, the, the contest speakers are always my favorite. And there's something about it is that they put so much heart and soul. It's likely for many of them, the first time they're, they're talking on stage in, in any kind of capacity uh, for many of them. And so there's some kind of energy that they bring that's like re- refreshing or, or new or raw. 
Um, on your video that you submitted, you talked about vibration. Can you share a little bit about chiropractic and vibration and what, 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 how those are connected? So that's been among my greatest, you know, passion and stuff I've loved exploring. The, the biggest thing to me that I've discovered is that vibration is the language of all intelligence and all information. That any way that relays any sort of information goes through vibration, whether it's the sound you hear coming out of this computer or you seeing me. But that goes for a lot more than just the world we see. It's the world within us. The way that our nervous system runs through neural oscillations, the way our brain waves connects our brain to our organs and our whole body operates under this one unique category, all stemming from the brain. And the vibrations of the tissue cells, of the, the bones themselves, where a high frequency vibration, for example, may be inflamed tissue where it's red and tight and it's got you know, too much tone, or you have hypotonic tissue with a low frequency that doesn't have enough rigidity to maintain the structure that it needs. And this vibration is what you play around with when you, you know, not specifically a network, but if you do an osseous adjustment, you're oscillating those bones, you're oscillating the nervous system, and you're setting this nervous system to reset itself to its innate vibrations. And the biggest thing that I've read or that I felt at all is that subluxations are the interference of this vibration throughout the nervous system, throughout our cognition, perception, and being. And so as a chiropractor, when you remove subluxation, you're removing interference from the very vibration that makes the person who they are. So the same way if you strum the guitar string and then you touch it with your finger, it's going to stop vibrating. That's what the subluxation does to your spine, to your spinal cord. And we're removing that and allowing people to be the fullest expression of who they are. So that's kind of how I got into the whole vibration oscillation connecting to the world around us in chiropractic. And I've just been very passionate about learning more about it and just applying it to everyday life. That's super exciting. Um, and so when you're in school mm -hmm. and you're thinking about the future, when you're thinking about, hey, I'm gonna be practicing, what are your thoughts of what, like, what lies ahead for you? So, I hope I have a very bright future for sure. And um, I think the biggest thing is I've met so many people in my life that when I told them that I was gonna be a chiropractor or that I love chiropractic, so many of them say, why? Or, or what is it? Or they, they have no, some even have a negative perception of it. And I understand throughout my own life experience how wonderful it is, what potential it offers to each and every human being. And there's so much of the population that has no clue so my goal is to truly try and break the stigmatism and make it so that if you ask someone when's the last time you went to a dentist and they say, hey, it's been over a year, you'd probably be like, okay, you should go see a dentist. But if you say the same thing about chiropractic care, people are going to say, I've never been to one. What is a chiropractor? What is it? Only thing is the worst case with a dentist, you need a root canal. Worst case with a chiropractor, you have, I don't know, pinched T1 nerve going to the heart. You have some major organ issues. You can't walk sciatica. There's a much greater magnitude of problems that stem from not having subluxations cleared. And just nobody really knows that. And I think that if I can you know, work to break that stigmatism and make it more of a public view, positive perception, it'll be great for everyone involved. Well, it's, that's a really big calling. And, and here's the thing. It's, 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 you, pro, you may have heard this adage um, or story, and um, many have, and you may not have heard it, but I know it's something that many people that have attended chiropractic programs have heard frequently, which is that a salesman goes to, a shoe salesman goes to Africa. And when he gets to Africa, um, he calls back, to the um, to their company that send me home. I want to come back. There's no uh, business here. No point in being here. No one wears shoes. And then the company sends another salesman to Africa, and the guy calls back and says, "Send more salespeople. Send more shoes. No one wears shoes here." Okay. <laughs> Have you heard that before? I actually haven't, but I love it. Okay. That. So, and that's a thing relative to chiropractic. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a spine and it's a travesty that people don't know that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a travesty that their humanity doesn't know that. There's no shortage of spines distorted. There's no lack of people that are not receiving care for their spine and nerve system. And 
um, the, the, the possibilities are so endless. Um, and as BJ Palmer said, we were left a sacred trust and like, he really spelled out such a world of possibility for us, regardless of what methodology you use, but of impacting the world for the better. And the things that you said are, are so, so such great examples. Um, the thing is, when you have that calling and that you realize, wow, every person on the planet that I look at is somehow living at less than what's capacity, you realize what potential there is for you to impact just even any individual life. So it's really great to, to see that. There's actually something that you should pick up and read. And I recommend everybody read if they have not. Dee Dee Palmer wrote something um, and it was in his uh, posthumous published book, um, The Moral and Religious Duties of the Chiropractor. If you haven't read that, read that. And it will light up some of what we just talked about. So what are your ambitious five, 10, even 20 years from now? How does what you just say tied into that? Well, I would hopefully like to have a couple of practices and ideally if I can, you know, become an amazing chiropractor one day and pass on whatever gifts and learnings I know to other doctors and just start, you know, a cascading effect of knowledge and positivity and health, you know, to as many people, practices, doctors, anything I can. That's really very cool. And, and for you thinking around what you've seen in your lifetime okay you're you're still young in years uh what you've seen in your lifetime and then what you've seen transpired in the last two years why does the world need chiropractic and maybe possibly possibly why is it even a more important message now so i think it all ties back to the whole point that not a lot of people understand what chiropractic is and the potentials it holds for each and every individual so the last two years, you have people all messed up from being inside, locked down. You know, they can have subluxations from all sorts of other things that aren't mechanical trauma. It can be from chemicals. It can be from all sorts of social interactions that they're not receiving and just their lives got messed up. And then even before that, I would say for my generation specifically, I'd like to think that everyone should be getting adjusted because how many patients, Danny, do you personally have that are, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, who've been messed up for 10, 20 years. And if they got cleared, saw it, got an adjustment once or twice even, minimum, in their 20s, how much different would their life be now if that right. didn't be a chronic issue, you know? And I just think that, sure, lots of people my age are healthy and feel good and don't have any pains or any issues. But what do they have brewing in their nervous systems that are just going to become chronic the next 30, 40 years? And then they're going to come to see me, you know, 40 years from now, I'm going to say, oh, they're messed up in this region, this region, this region. It's been going on for this many years. But if when they were my age, you just got adjusted a couple of times, how much different would their entire life have been? Right, exactly. And, you know, the thing is, then you realize, I, I think about this all the time. If we've never seen a thousand people a week, we've seen close to there. We've been on the other, uh, you know, really close to that, that range. But even if our individual office were to see a thousand people a week, like one office or your office, Jason, that your office sees a thousand people in a week, all right? And you have people coming once a week, twice a week, three times a week, once a month. At most, that thousand visits a week is probably 300 people or something like that, which mm -hmm. is such a small per per percentage. Maybe it's 500 people right? Even if it were a thousand people all coming once a week, it's such a small part of humanity. You know, mm -hmm. it's just a, a, a drop of sand on the, on the whole um, the beach, heart. right? Yeah. Exactly. And so it's a drop of water in the ocean. When you realize that that potential of how many lives there are needed to be impact, and then how humanity could be different, even like when you think about all the stress and fear that people have been pumped into them, Okay, and we don't have to go into the politics of it. People know that that's, that's the, the case in the last couple of years. Just watch any amount of TV. You can feel the tension building up in people's nerve systems, right? So uh, regardless of what side of the political fence you are, you're on and or what kind of uh, your, val your values are on uh, coronavirus are, the, the amount of fear that has been pumped into people's systems, you know that they would live a different life if their nerve system was healthier and they could see different potentials. So it's, it's something really important. Why do you think the world, especially your generation, needs chiropractic? So I think that also goes back to just how if you just have some vision to 30 years from now, people my age, 
What happens when, you know, they get in one small car accident, they slip and fall one time, they have a couple micro traumas happening regularly for years and years and years. And these chronic issues are going to develop over time and become worse every year, every year, every year. And one day it's going to get so bad. They're going to walk into my or your office and they're going to say, please help me. I've been in pain. I haven't been living with the full expression of who I am. But if when they were just my age or just years back, however early they could, they were suggested a few times and had those subluxations cleared before it became a chronic issue, how different would their lives be and how different would the lives be that they interact with when they are who they are? Right, right, exactly. So true, so, so true. And um, why are you excited to be at uh, Mile High this year? Well, I'm just, so on the topic of vibration, which is what I'm speaking about, it's something I feel very passionate about trying to understand the world around me. And the more I figure out about vibration and oscillation and how it works to communicate all information there is, it only keeps coming back to me. That's the nervous system. That's the human body. That's our lives. That's you know, our consciousness. That's everything. And I've gotten to read some amazing books that I feel that not a lot of people have by Yitzhak Bentov and David Steiner. And, you know, I recommend that anyone go read Stalking the Wild Pendulum if they can, because that book basically changed my life and motivated me to want to give this presentation. But I just feel that if I can help each person individually understand the little force that makes us us, it will make the world a better place. And I'm just super excited to share that philosophy and that view with anyone who would like to listen to Mile High. Well, I'm super excited that you're going to be there. Um, what are you excited about now as a chiropractic student? Okay. And, you know, th this is not having to do with like what school you attend or, you know, whether it could be in a very vitalistic school or a very allopathic school. Um, sadly, those exist. Um, <laughs> um, but regardless of where, where, where you're at school, what are you excited about in school? What are you looking forward to in your, in your education classes that you're super excited about? Well, I've been loving the clubs. I've, I go to Network Club every Thursday. That's my favorite thing to go to. I'm just loving getting to watch hands-on some of the older students, what they've learned and how they apply it, and them giving me those little nuggets of information. And I'm just trying to put it all together to figure out what kind of doctor I'm going to be, how I'm going to help people. But even more than that, I just love seeing all these brilliant people who are like-minded like me, want to become chiropractors, have passion for the profession. And I imagine, sure, in 20 years, I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to have my own practice. But so will these people. Look at all these amazing people who are going to be affecting the world, hopefully just the same way I will, you know? So I just love to just think about how many there are, how many there are doing great jobs and what they'll be like in the future. So very exciting. So very exciting. And I'm excited that you... Um, have picked up the calling and I'm super excited to see you when you come out to Colorado. Um, I'm super excited to see you on stage and uh, also super energized about how you're going to contribute to uh, not just the chiropractic profession, but humanity. Um, what, what would you, if you had the opportunity to shift any one thing in the chiropractic profession, like you could wave a magic wand and it would somehow be different, what would that be? Um, well, I definitely have less experience, I would say, than others, just being an earlier quarter student. What I have kind of seen is not sort of like a technique tribalism where someone's like, oh, this technique's amazing. Don't do that one. Don't do this one. Do this one. I would love it if we all came together and just said, no matter what technique you do, no matter what school you went to, whatever background you do, it's all chiropractic. And we can say anything we want about how one works better than the other, how it doesn't but it all works amazing for someone who's never gotten chiropractic. And it's just a beautiful thing to help as many people as we can. Um, I'll tell you, that is something that I, uh, I really appreciate that that was your answer because when I was in chiropractic school, I had this really similar, similar feeling. And hopefully you've picked up that at mile high, that's part of what we do. It's part of the, the values of mile high is that, Hey, all our different um, tribes can come together because we're all on the same team. And with us focusing um, the program on the art of chiropractic, I think it's gonna be very unique this year to experience that. Because you're right, so so sadly, so frequently, people throw rocks each each other for the type of approach they do, rather than say, hey, you know, we're, we're here to make an impact on the world together. So I appreciate that you see that at this point. Um, well, we look forward to seeing you at Mile High. Is there anything last you'd like to say on this podcast uh, to share with the audience? 
I'm just super excited for the opportunity. Can't wait till mile high. I really hope that everyone likes my presentation and everyone gains from everything that happens the whole weekend. Excellent. Well, we look forward to seeing you there. Um, let's, uh, we, if you have not already reserved your seats for Mile High, make sure you do that. Um, you go to milehighchiro.org and you want to do that before September 1st when rates raise. And we look forward to seeing you on higher ground. Keep changing spines and lives and minds with chiropractic. Mm -hmm.